With just two episodes left in season one, episode six of Ahsoka finally gives us some long-awaited answers about Grand Admiral Thrawn's return and the ongoing search for Ezra Bridger. Titled Far, Far Away, this episode takes Ahsoka and Hu Yang on a mission to find out where Balin Skull and Morgan Elsbeth have taken Sabine Wren. Jennifer Getzinger's direction brings much-needed stability to the series after the visually uneven episode last week. Far, Far Away offers Getzinger plenty to work with, from sweeping rocky landscapes with adorable new creatures to the vastness of Thrawn's Star Destroyer. She brilliantly utilizes these settings to keep us engaged. As for Dave Filoni's scripts, they continue to leave some room for improvement. However, they do manage to recapture what made Star Wars Rebels enjoyable. This could be attributed to the return of Ezra Bridger and the end of the Grand MacGuffin search. The episode kicks off with Ahsoka's appearance as she and Hu Yang continue their journey on Purgal Airways. They briefly discuss their past encounter with Thrawn and Sabine's fateful decision, setting everything into motion. Amidst this discussion, there's some light-hearted banter about the history of the galaxy, volumes 1, 2, and 3, with Ahsoka cheekily declaring that one is the best. Star Wars fans might interpret this as a nod to the original trilogy, but I'll give it to the prequel trilogy since it comes first chronologically. This scene also allows Tennant to deliver the iconic line, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. After all, he's quite the expert on galactic travel. Meanwhile, in that galaxy far, far away, Sabine Wren finds herself in a holding cell where Balin and Shin left her after her capture. Balin pays her a brief visit, and Sabine quickly senses that he doesn't intend to uphold their bargain. However, once Balin rejoins Morgan on the bridge, she questions his plan to follow through with the deal. Balin's motivations have remained a mystery throughout the series, and ironically, Filoni's script acknowledges the need for more development in his character. We have key details about his past, but they haven't been pieced together to explain his true purpose. These are the little things that could have been worked out in a writer's room, helping to tie up the loose ends in the series. So, with just a couple of episodes left, the stage is set for some exciting developments. We're finally getting closer to the much-anticipated reunion with Ezra Bridger and the unraveling of Thrawn's role in this galactic puzzle. New Night Sister lore. As they draw closer to their destination, a surprising revelation unfolds about Peridea. This planet has been a Purgal graveyard for as long as anyone can remember, but that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to its secrets. Balin later discloses to his apprentice that Peridea has a rich history. It was once the Witch Kingdom of Dathomari, a place steeped in folklore and mystery. Upon landing on Peridea, the unlikely group consisting of Morgan, Balin, Shin, and a cuffed Sabine receives a rather unexpected welcome. Three Night Sisters, who've been eagerly waiting, greet them. The Great Mother, in particular, isn't pleased that Morgan brought an unexpected guest along. As a result, they escort Sabine to temporary solitary confinement while they anticipate Thrawn's arrival. To his credit, Balin appears concerned about Sabine's fate, though not concerned enough to intervene. The Great Mother hints that Thrawn will be joining them soon, and she's right on the money. After a brief interlude, Thrawn finally makes his live-action debut, and it's quite a striking entrance. While it might not match the menacing aura of the character in the Expanded Universe or Timothy Zahn's present novels, Mickelson portrays the Grand Admiral with an eerie presence, especially when he's accompanied by the new Night Troopers and the enigmatic gold-masked Enoch, whose troops chant like zealous cultists. After the earlier Marek revelation this season, it's safe to assume that Enoch is not someone extraordinary, but he does evoke memories of the gold-masked Enoch from Ben 10, which coincidentally aired alongside Star Wars, the Clone Wars on Cartoon Network in the late 2000s. Like the Great Mother, Thrawn isn't thrilled about Sabine's unexpected presence. However, being the master tactician he is, he spots an opportunity. Sabine is searching for Ezra, and Thrawn aims to neutralize them both. So he hatches a plan that involves Sabine's release from confinement, providing her with provisions, weapons, transportation, and Ezra's last known location. Meanwhile, he'll send Balin and Shin to tail her, with orders to eliminate both Sabine and Ezra once they reunite. 
It's a ruthless and heartless plan, but it does make sense in terms of the narrative. Sabine embarks on a true quest to find Ezra, while Balin and Shin are thrust into a mission devoid of personal motivation. The stage is set for a complex web of intrigue and pursuit as Thrawn's cunning tactics come into play. Next, we move on to an enthralling continuation of Ahsoka's journey. Ezra Bridger is back! With blissful ignorance of the impending trap, Sabine eagerly accepts Thrawn's offer and embarks on her quest to locate Ezra Bridger. However, her journey doesn't unfold as smoothly as she had hoped. Before setting out on her peculiar Howler mount, which is a curious blend of wolf and horse, Enoch offers a warning that she'll encounter nomadic groups locked in a constant struggle for survival. Enoch's words prove to be true. As Sabine traverses the rocky wasteland, she's ambushed by the red-swathed nomads, and her mount almost abandons her. Fortunately, her recent lightsaber training with Hu Yang comes in handy, allowing her to dispatch the nomads and emerge from the encounter largely unscathed. Like previous episodes, Ahsoka continues its tradition of featuring at least one lightsaber-centric fight. The second half of Episode 6 takes us into familiar Star Wars Rebels territory, which feels like a sweet spot, especially with Filoni's writing. Sabine's predicament compels her to form a bond with her Howler mount, ultimately leading her to an adorable discovery, the Noti creatures. They recognize the rebel symbol on her Mandalorian armor, and soon, a whole group of Notis adorned with the same emblem appears. Sabine quickly realizes that this could mean they've had contact with Ezra and urges them to take her to him. The only noticeable difference between Ahsoka and Rebels, aside from the transition to live action, is the visual palette. Ahsoka lacks the vibrant colors that made Rebels visually captivating. The series retains a drab and colorless tone, even casting Sabine's brightly colored armor in muted hues. In the final thrilling ten minutes of the episode, Sabine's long-awaited reunion with Ezra finally unfolds. Unlike the nostalgic nods scattered throughout the series, this reunion carries genuine weight. Director Getzinger crafts the scene masterfully, building anticipation until the moment the camera spots Ezra before Sabine finally sees him. It's a pity that the premiere hinted at a sibling-like bond between Sabine and Ezra, because their reunion hints at something much deeper. In their time apart, they've matured, embarked on new adventures, and made choices both good and bad. The sight of Ezra's beard alone speaks volumes about how much time has passed. Perhaps as the series progresses, there's room for their feelings to evolve, if not explicitly on screen, then within the hearts of fans. Sabine is cautious about revealing the details of her arrival, choosing instead to let Ezra share his experiences on Peridia and his small band of Noti rebels, leaving plenty of room for the remaining episodes to build on this long-awaited reunion. So, as Ahsoka's journey unfolds, the reunion of Sabine and Ezra promises to be a significant turning point, and we can't wait to see how it shapes the future of the series. Admiral Thrawn's Grand Plans Revealed as Far, Far Away draws to a close, we find Thrawn and Morgan deep in scheming mode on the bridge of his imposing Star Destroyer. Their focus shifts when they receive word that Ahsoka seems to have miraculously survived her near-death experience. While Ahsoka is quite familiar with Thrawn, it appears that the Grand Admiral hasn't been diligently brushing up on his knowledge of the fallen Jedi. He instructs Morgan to gather every scrap of information possible about Ahsoka, her background, history, homeworld, her master, basically anything and everything. Thrawn also casts a shadow of doubt on their trust in Balin, reminding them that he was once a Jedi himself. This raises the question of whether Balin might betray Morgan, especially given his ongoing hunger for power, or if it's just a clever misdirection. Thrawn, clearly irritated that his plans might once again be thwarted, informs the Night Sisters that he'll require their magical assistance once more. The Night Sisters cryptically claim that destiny demands it, though one can't help but wonder, does it really? Thrawn's intricate schemes seem to have limited impact on the galaxy's eventual trajectory toward the sequel trilogy era, so where is this all headed? Only time will unravel the mysteries that lie ahead. As we continue this thrilling journey with Ahsoka, the intricate web of plots and power struggles promises to keep us on the edge of our seats. Stay tuned for more twists and turns in the galaxy's ever-evolving saga. That brings us to the end of today's video.
Did you like this episode? Do let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, then please like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.